Welcome to Through the Bible with Brother David, and I appreciate you, as always, joining in to Through the Bible. And if you, if you would, share these with others that uh, hopefully others could see and perhaps be blessed in the knowledge of God's Word as we study it. Today's the last Sunday in the book, month of June of the year 2023. Tremendous, isn't it, that time keeps passing us by so quickly. And uh, it won't be long the fall. The year will be here. Summer has just arrived. We'll have three months of sunshine uh, in June, July, August, and on into September. And in the summer months. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll certainly uh, appreciate them. For the most part, June has been very cool and very low humidity, which is unusual for us here in the Southland. To have spring to linger through June as, as well as it did. But we're today studying the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 7, and we'll read And Moses took the tabernacle and pitched it without the camp, and off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. It came to pass that everyone which sought the Lord went out into the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. Now notice this has been moved from within the camp, and now it's outside the camp. You'll notice that, certainly because uh, the people were too sinful. God would have killed them. So Moses moved the tabernacle outside the camp. And it came to pass, when Moses went out into the tabernacle, that all the people rose up and stood every man at his tent door, and looked after Moses until he was gone to the tabernacle. It came to pass as Moses entered to the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. What about that? Oh, very interesting. Uh, the Lord met with Moses. And the Bible says, the Lord talked with Moses. And uh, how did he talk with him? Let's read. And the people saw this cloud, the cloudy pillar and at the tabernacle door and all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door and the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend what about that that's how close that Moses was with God God spoke with him face to face as a man speaketh to his friend Moses went up to the door of the tabernacle and there God met with him and God spake with him. The cloudy pillar came down and stood at the tabernacle door where Moses was. And Moses talked with God. We know part of what God said to Moses and we know part of what Moses said to God. We're going to read some more of it. And so it's amazing that God would bring Moses into his confidence as much as he did. And God thought so highly of Moses that he would have made a whole nation out of Moses had Moses not intervened and, and prayed unto God to do likewise. And so uh, we find a great truth here between Moses and between the Lord God. Now my friends, I'm not Moses, and you're not Moses, and uh, we can never be Moses. But if you know the Lord as your personal Savior, you can go to Him in prayer, and you can talk with Him, and you can listen. He at times will speak to you, as a man speaketh to his friend. And... Uh, I've never heard an audible voice of God, never. But many, many times God has visited upon my soul. I knew it was Him. I could tell it was the Lord. Many times have I asked for directions uh, and, and uh, the ability to make the right decisions from the Lord. And many times He has gave me answers. Uh, not always. But many times he has given me answers. And he would do it uh, in just a way in which I knew it had to be the Lord. 
I was praying about buying some property one day. And I wanted to buy a piece of property. I was thinking about it and I was praying about that. And I didn't want to do the wrong thing. I prayed about it and the Lord brought to my heart about uh, uh, in the book of Jeremiah, he bought a piece of property that belonged to his uncle. And the Lord told him to buy that, to arise and buy it. And the Lord told me, uh, and that, and through the scriptures, I knew it was his voice that would be fine for me to buy that piece of property. And I bought it, and so it worked out just fine. One of these days, my wife will sell it. I think she'll make some money off of it when she does. And so that'll be a good thing. It'll be a helpful thing to her. But now right here, God was speaking face to face with Moses as a friend speaking to his friend. And when you go to talk to the Lord and you, you've got things cleared out of your heart and out of your life, you can talk to him as your friend as well. And he will talk to you as his friend. Now if you've got sin in your heart, don't go thinking that you're going to have that sweet communion with the Lord. You won't. Uh, that sin is going to be before your heart and before your eyes until you've gone and made it right or asked God to forgive you of it. And so, uh, and only then can you have the sweet communion as friend with friend that Moses had. You think that if Moses had been part of this idolatry that he'd be standing up here in the tent door talking with God? I don't believe so for one minute. You think if he'd have part in making that golden calf and making the people of Israel naked and dance before it, that he'd be standing up here with them? No way. No way. It wouldn't be happening. So you see, he'd have had to got right with God first before he could have talked face to face with the Lord. No way he could have done it likewise. And so, uh, We keep learning things about God as we study the Bible, about his relationship with men, uh, those who have put their trust in him, and then those who have not. But now let's read the last of verse 11. And he turned again to the camp, and his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. What about this? This is the second time we read things about Joshua. And right here, he was in the tabernacle with Moses. We read before that he was up in the mount with Moses. What about that? And, uh, and that very interesting that he wanted to go and went. No word do we find that Joshua was commanded or chosen to go with Moses up into the mount or into the tabernacle, but he went. What about that? You know, I think about the disciples out on the Sea of uh, Galilee, and uh, my, uh, the Lord came walking to them upon the waters, and uh, Peter says, if, it, if it's thee, bid me, I could come to thee upon the water. And the Lord just simply said, come. And Peter got out and started walking toward the Lord on the water as well. What about that? At no point was Peter chosen out of the disciples to do that. At no point did the Lord tell Peter, now I'm going to let you walk, but not the other. It's interesting, isn't it, to think like that. And, uh, and we find uh, people like this throughout the Bible who sought to be with the Lord. And he allowed them to be there and to be with him. We find the woman that touched him in the midst of the multitude. And Jesus turned around and said, Who touched me? For I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. Well, she, she uh, uh, showed herself and said it was me. And the Lord did not rebuke her for that. She chose to be with him. And she wanted his touch. And she got it. Uh, so it is with many people, many times, those who want the Lord, 
those that seek to be with him, God allows it. And uh, the Bible says, if we worship God, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Isn't that wonderful to think about? That when you desire to be with the Lord, and you desire to uh, enjoy his presence, that you, we can go to him, and we can do so as Joshua went with Moses up into the mount and also into the tabernacle, as Peter did, as the woman in the midst of the multitude did. Many others as well we could talk about how that they wanted to be with the Lord. And Zacchaeus, he wanted to see the Lord. He climbed up in the sycamore tree to see the Lord as he passed by. And the Lord stopped, Zacchaeus, come down. For I'm going to your house today. Ain't that amazing uh, that the Lord I would do that? And think about David. David wanted to build a house for the Lord. And, uh, and he, he started to do so. And the Lord appeared to David through the prophet and said, Never before has a man wished and wanted to build me a house. And he said, It's put me upon thy heart and thine alone to do this thing. And said, Because you have done this, he said, There will always be one from thy house to sit upon the throne. Now, as you know, he wouldn't let David build the house because David had been a man of war and shed much blood. But he certainly allowed Solomon to build it. He was known as the king of peace. Isn't that very interesting to think about those who wanted to be with the Lord? And Enoch, we read about Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. I was not, for the Lord took him. And we don't read about God necessarily singling Enoch out. I think I have every right to think that Enoch sought the Lord and that Enoch wanted to walk with God and did walk with God. What about that? Oh, my friends, we could all learn a great, a large amount, a great amount about God right here in this from Joshua uh, going with Moses. And uh, how that God granted him uh, the, the, to do that. And how I firmly believe if we seek the Lord and we want to follow him, that he's not going to rebuke us from doing so. If we want to seek his face, he bids us to come. I firmly believe that he does. And if we want his communion, we seek him. He'll give it to us. I believe he does that for those who desire him and seek his face. I have Bible for that, I do believe. I know we can all say, well, we're not worthy. None of us are. Not one of us is worthy of the Lord. I'm so thankful that he bids us to come, we who believe upon him, and to worship at his dear feet. Ain't that amazing that God would be that open to us as he was open to Joshua coming along too. And uh, I appreciate the man who used to pastor the church that I'm a member of. And uh, <clears throat> any time I wanted to talk to him, I could. I could just walk right in his office. If he was there, he'd talk to him. He didn't matter what he was doing. I wouldn't be over two or three minutes and I'd be gone. But he was that way with me. I could just come right in. And uh, and many guys wanted to travel with him to some of his meetings. And if there's any way, he'd let them come. And I think he got that from the Bible. Uh, I think he did so to help us young men to be that way. My dear friends, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I encourage you to call upon him today to be your Lord and your Savior and that you can be forgiven of all your sin debt that you've ever committed. And I pray that you do so. 
This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus.